Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to adjust your valves on this uh, 2006 Mitsubishi Outlander with the 2.4 liter 4 cylinder engine. Okay, on most vehicles when, you, you, when you're going to adjust your valves, the car needs to be cold so you would need to leave it overnight or uh, let it get uh, let it cool down for four, or five, 4 to 5 hours. But on this car, for whatever reason, uh, according to the manual, it says to let it warm up and in fact it says to let the coolant temperature, the coolant temperature needs to be between 176 and 203 degrees Fahrenheit or you know I think just about there or right before that that um, you know that needle gets to the middle of the gauge for a coolant temperature that's about 190 degrees or so so uh, that's about right you know it's gonna take if you let it idle on a you know on a warm day uh, for like four or five minutes that should be plenty okay so just gonna let it warm up and then we're gonna stop the car and start taking things out Okay, your first step should be to disconnect your uh, negative side of the battery. I'm not going to do it because I need this connected because I'm doing other stuff to this car. Uh, but you should go ahead and disconnect this uh, negative side of the battery first, okay? Okay, as you may or may not be able to tell, this uh, car has a small ticking noise. You know, actually I've replaced the, I rebuilt the cylinder head on this and uh, replaced all the valves. That's why it's ticking. So. It should have been adjusted before we put the cylinder head back in, but I wasn't doing the job that someone else did, and they forgot to adjust it. So now I'm going to do the adjusting myself here. Okay, first step is going to be to disconnect this clamp, remove this clamp, and then get this uh, vacuum line out of here. Okay. There we go. Next, we're going to remove these uh, five 10 millimeter bolts that are holding this piece in. There's three here and two in the back. Okay, before we can remove this piece completely, we need to undo this clamp here. It's, uh, it's gonna require a 10 millimeter uh, socket or a wrench. Okay, now with that clamp loosened, we should be able to just pull this out of here. There we go. Okay, next step is going to be to removing all these 10 millimeter bolts that are holding our ignition coils in and removing them. You probably won't have to disconnect the connectors because there's enough slack here to just pull them and put, push them back. So there's enough room here, okay? Okay, now just twist and pull on these and they should come out without much fuss. There we go. Okay, what we're going to do next is remove this PCV hose. Okay, next we remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding this uh, wiring harness bracket to our valve cover. Okay, now there's only six bolts that are holding this valve cover into our cylinder head. And there's three up front and three in the back right here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those next. Okay, so now with those six bolts removed and these uh, wiring harness brackets out of the way, we should be able to just... Well, this took very little effort, but sometimes you're going to have to pry on this a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit to get it loose. Uh, then, we are going to need to remove this bracket as well because it's kind of blocking it. Okay, Okay, and there's just one 12 millimeter bolt at the back of this that's attaching it to the cylinder head. So let's go ahead and remove that next. Okay, we actually don't need to completely remove this. We can just loosen it and push it back a little bit just to make room here. And actually the trick is to push this valve cover this way and then lift up on this side and then it will come out, okay? Alrighty, here's a look at our uh, uh, top of the cylinder head and our valves and camshaft. This is a single overhead cam obviously and these are our rocker arms. These are the adjusting uh, this is the adjusting screw that goes through your rocker arm and rests on top of your uh, your valve. And the space between the screw that goes through here and the space between the top of your valve is what you will need to adjust. You adjust that by take, loosening this nut and then turning this either clockwise to decrease the space or counterclockwise to increase the space that's between your rocker arm and uh, your top of your valve. Okay, but what you want to make sure is you do you want to get the engine to top that center and then that way these are uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to adjust the space here because if it's not at top that center for like you know for cylinder number one uh, 
these are going to be engaging your the top of the cam lobe and there's going to be no space between here and your cam lobe to adjust okay so we're going to next uh, we're going to have to get this engine to top dead center uh there's usually marks on your camshaft and your uh, your harmonic balancer that says top dead center but on this engine uh I cannot find any marks on on the harmonic balancer and also I can't see any marks on the back of this camshaft uh, that would indicate where top that center is. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually remove this uh, upper timing belt cover and also uh, remove the wheel and uh, get on the our, uh, get on our uh, crankshaft and turn that uh, clockwise until I see the the marks that are in front of the this uh, this uh, camshaft gear hopefully and that way we'll be, I'll be able to set it to top that center okay okay so before we take off this uh, upper timing belt cover we need to disconnect this uh, wiring harness from it this side is only it's easy you just press on these tabs and pull same thing on the back here press and pull get that out of the way okay and to take out this uh, timing belt cover it looks like there's uh, four bolts that are holding it in one is here the other one is that one right there and there's another two on this side this one and there's one right there and they look to me like 12 bolts these three look 12 and then that one looks like a 10 millimeter so we're gonna go ahead and remove those things okay here's the 10 millimeter okay here's something I should have probably spotted earlier this bolt is blocked by this uh, this uh, engine mount but you know I'm gonna try to loosen it see if it can come out enough to remove it because the other ones on the other side have plenty of space and yeah we should be we should be able to remove this valve cover okay so we got lucky there actually I'm gonna remove this uh, this bracket here on top to with it there we go okay now we should be able to take this out there we go okay here's a look at our camshaft sprocket and as you can see there's a top dead center mark and we need to line up exactly at a 90 degrees here on top and when we do that we have our cylinder number one at top dead center what we're gonna have to do next is get underneath the vehicle you don't have to raise the vehicle for this you can just turn your wheels to the right and get a 22 millimeter socket on your harmonic balancer bolt and turn it clockwise and line that mark up okay all right that looks top dead center to me Okay, and a quick way to you can uh, verify if you have the cylinder number one at top dead center is just basically pull on these rocker arms and check if you have any play. If you have play on all four, that means that cylinder is at top dead center and we are ready to start adjusting our valves, okay? Okay, so with the cylinder number one at top dead center, we're gonna be able to adjust eight of our 16 valves, which are gonna be the four on cylinder number one and then these two, the intake valves on cylinder number two, and then the exhaust valves on cylinder number three. Okay, so when we adjust those, we're gonna rotate the engine, uh, we're gonna rotate the crankshaft actually 360 degrees, and when we get this uh, timing mark that's here facing down on the on our camshaft, this, this thing going at uh, turning 180 degrees exactly here, and facing down, we can then adjust the valves on the four valves on cylinder number uh, four, the two intake valves on the cylinder number three, and the two exhaust valves on the cylinder number uh, two. Okay. Okay, and the valve clearance for this engine is 0.3 millimeters on uh, the exhaust side and 0.2 millimeters on the intake side. And you're gonna need filler gauges for this, obviously. And what we're gonna do is loosen this nut, this locking nut, and adjust this up and down to get this, uh, to get the feel, to get the right space between this, uh, this adjusting screw and the top of our valve. But let's just uh, try to see if we can get this in there anyway. This is a 0.3 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. And you know, I can't, I can't even force this in there. So the space in there is way too tight and it does need to be adjusted. Same thing for this one, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to adjust one of, one of these valves and then you can just copy the procedure for all the rest. Uh, the back ones, the intake valves on this car, you're gonna need good to good idea to get one of these angled uh, filler gauges because you need to kind of dip in there. Uh, but yeah, so basically what your next step is going to be is uh, un, you know loosening this adjusting valve, uh, adjusting nut and 
once that loosened, you want to get your, you want to turn this this adjusting screw counterclockwise to create more space because there wasn't hardly enough space before you started and get your feeler gauge in there and once you get in there you basically want to get it to a point where you feel some drag on your feeler gauge at the same time it's not too hard to move it around and it's not feeling loose in there either okay and one way to do it is to tighten it where you can hardly move it and then start unscrewing it and once you get to a point where there is some drag in there like, like just about here you can you can stop yeah just the, that's about right for me and then you can stop all the while you're holding this adjusting nut exactly in the same position and then you get your wrench and making sure you're not moving that adjusting nut you tighten this the torque spec for this is like seven foot pounds but whatever you hand tighten that and that's hardly anything Okay, and once you tighten that, you want to verify your adjustment by getting your feeler gauge in there. And this is way too loose for me, so I'm just going to do it again. I'm just going to turn that, turn that back a little bit, okay, because this is kind of way too loose. And that's how you adjust valves, you know, it's, there's no perfect way to do it. <laughs> You might have to do it a couple times before you get it right. And even if you try your hardest, you still might not get it perfectly, as perfectly as you like. So that's uh, something to keep in mind, but nothing beats a good sounding engine in my opinion. So it's worth it. All right, let's try that again. Okay, yeah, that's about perfect drag, perfect amount of drag, you know. Okay, I'm gonna call this valve adjusted. Now I'm just gonna repeat this procedure for all the other valves and then I'll put the whole engine back, you know, valve cover and our ignition coils and whatnot back together and I'll start the engine and hopefully we'll be able to uh, tell the difference from before and after the, the valve adjustment, okay? Okay, so just got done putting everything back together and as you may or may not be able to tell, uh, it sounds a little better. You know, this camera is going to be picking up the ticking sounds a lot. It's going to make them a lot more pronounced, I think, so it might sound uh, pretty bad on camera. But it's in person, it sounds sounds good. You know, it's better than before, but still not perfect. Uh, and that's just the way it is with uh, adjusting valves. You might need to do it two or three times to get it exactly right. and. Uh, Go just go by trial and error, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that's all uh, there is to adjusting the valves on this car. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more like it. Thanks for watching.